Well guys, today is the day that we're going to try and uh, see if this engine will run again. Uh, there's a few things to reinstall in the engine bay um, and then we're going to go through some steps of getting the engine primed with the oil and um, then hopefully it'll just crank um, once all that is done. So join us and we'll see how we get on. So as we get closer to needing <clears throat> to get this car running, I've dug out all the engine looms out of the loft. And they're not in the greatest of states. There's a few uh, repairs we need to do. This is where somebody put in the immobiliser switch. <clears throat> and in other areas it's covered in oil and grease and stuff. So I've ordered a set of just, you know, your average, I think they call this split conduit. So I've measured up the diameters of these. And I've ordered a batch from eBay. So I'll just be replacing those. And I've got some electrical loom tape to wrap around the end. And then I'm going to give them a WD wipe over the plugs. And give them a bit of a clean. So not a great job, not a nice job. But, um... Just got to get on with it and uh, see how it goes. And then I'll just go and show you progress with the car. So in the engine bay, we've got a few uh, things mounted to the front of the engine now. We've got the injector rail back in, um, all stugged up. We've got the inlet manifold. This is the original inlet manifold that I tried to clean my clean the inside out to clean the inside out as best I could. Uh, just swilling around some traffic film remover, spraying it with um, brake cleaner, giving it a good old swirl around and then I left it to dry off <coughs> in front of a heater for a long time. It's been sat in the sun so I'm pretty sure there's nothing left in there. <coughs> um, and then down on this side We've now got the drive shaft back in and situated and I've talked up all the nuts finally on this wishbone and the carrier um, for the hub etc. These are still loose um, just because and I'm still waiting to do up these little bits. Um, so on the other side, <coughs> if you remember in here, you can see, in here this nut was free spinning because normally it sits inside a little uh, slot as it were but obviously this is all new, I've, if you haven't watched before then I welded this up all from, well copying the original I welded it all up from new pieces of metal. So this is my little solution it's one of those with a tab welded onto the side and what that does is it goes in and then it will stop it spinning um, against that back wall so that means that it can be done up and loosened in case anybody needs to do that for the suspension geometry and all that business so this side hasn't yet got the drive shaft in but that's one of my jobs for this afternoon down the back there we've got the exhaust manifold in with the fresh copper nuts and a couple of coolant hoses are now tightened up. So a few little jobs done over the weekend. Okay so we have the driver's side um, linked up with the drive shaft and again we've talked up the, uh, the bolts and the anti-link bar, uh, anti-roll link bars. Uh, I tightened these up with pressure under the hub, got a jack and put some pressure on the hub uh, to tighten these two up. Um, this was a bit nerve wracking because I'd realised I'd left one of the longer um, unions on here which wasn't going to work with this and I only had one shot at chopping the olive off or whatever you call it, the lip off 
to replace this and put the new one on and still manage to finish the uh, the end of the pipe so that was a bit stressful but it went okay um, so that's both sides brake lines tightened up and uh, secured hi again so um, we are back doing an evening shift on the car but the good news is that in theory the brake lines all the way to the back of the car are complete um, so in theory we can bleed this and I've just, I've just picked up a bleeding tool from Screwfix might straighten up some of these pipes they're looking a bit wonky but these these brackets worked um, obviously really well obviously they should do because they are GM parts um, just drilled the little pilot hole screwed these in and they're nice and solid so yeah looking really factory fresh to a certain degree anyway um, so another thing to prepare uh, before we get to the car this uh, this is the original fan shroud, believe it or not, that I have cleaned up with just WD-40 and a good wipe over and it looks absolutely brand new. The only way you'll tell it's not brand new is the fact that I had to um, grind off the original screw head of here and the same here, which is a bit unfortunate. We'll have to work out how to secure that again. The fan is brand new, this is old, some old uh, GM stock that somebody had in a garage in Wales I think um, so this now looks fairly brand new if you if I hadn't told you it was a used part you probably wouldn't have told, been able to tell okay so all we needed was this M6 screw in that side and then I've used a big penny washer and another screw and that is going nowhere nice and secure doesn't look the best but it's not going anywhere and then we just fitted the original rubbers from the other radiator giving them a clean and fitted them on there we'll see if that's got enough grab on the brackets when we put them in so this is the loom that sits on top of the engine and connects to various parts of the engine and we've just completed the little rework by replacing all the conduit items retaping around the ends and stuff and we've repaired the coil pack um, wire that somebody had cut and we've also installed the engine gas recirculation valve uh, the cheetah whatever you want to call it that fools the engine in thinking it's still there ideally with a, with a remap we would delete it from the map and do whatever with the ECU but for now it's just sat in the loom hopefully sit inside the plastic case and you'll not see it so I'm gonna try and fit this now I know it's dark outside <laughs> but okay so we've got that loom laid in into that top uh, conduit that plastic conduit thing and uh, all plumbed in all wired up just needs a few tie wrap clips when we're happy that everything's working um, and just need the lambda sensors connecting up down there left the coil pack off because we need that off uh, cycling the oil around and everything ECU's back on forgive these uh, red bolts I'll be taking them off in a minute but they're just what I had lying around momentarily all right morning everyone so this is Saturday morning <clears throat> Saturday morning it's about half past seven really want to see this thing to at least trying to turn over by the end of the day maybe not running completely but at least trying to turn over jobs wise we've got to fit the exhaust underneath we've got to fit the engine bay loom we've got to fit the cooling system so that's what I'm going to do the car has now got fuel in the tank I put about 16 litres in last night so I've just checked for any signs of leaks and uh, I think we're all good 
So let's get cracking. So that's the exhaust Oop, exhaust system all buttoned up and it just about sits perfect. It's a tiny, 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 tiny bit shorter than I might have wanted. But anyway, don't worry about that for now. Let's have a look under here. So all the way through from the downpipe centre section all the way back ready to rock all right well it's lunch time so i thought i'd better give you an update uh, on where we are you can see we've got quite a bit of progress going on the uh, engine looms are back in the charging loom you know the alternator um, slash starter motor is in tucked in down here and looking nice we've got the starting to put the coolant pipes in and the radiator as well this um, assembly is looking a little bit wonky as you can see I don't really know why well I do because this is this strap from the K&N filter seems to just bring it down a bit so I might just have to work something out different in there but yeah overall quite happy We've got a few items back in here. This isn't as clean as I'd like, but didn't have much chance to clean it, so... Oh, and I've lost a screw, a screw for the wash bottle, so I'm looking for that. But otherwise, progress is going well. And I'm just going to finish up the coolant piping. And at some point today, we may be able to just whiz the engine around on the starter motor. Get some of the oil going. I've got the oil... I did all the fluids yesterday, I don't know if I said oil, gearbox oil, power steering fluid which managed to overflow and drip down the back which was a bit annoying. But never mind. Um, the relay box and fuse box managed just to fit in just about. Uh, there is clearance on this pipe, I know it looks like it's pressurised on it but the actual box stops about here so the pipe is fairly clear. I'm sure I could have done a better job and we may do in the future with that. So yeah, just having a nice day, plopping things back on and doing bits as we go. So I'll check in later. So I've just been checking out some of the wiring, making sure that there isn't a short circuit between live and neutral before I replace the neutral on the battery. I've been testing the various earth points around, see their resistance back to the battery terminal. All the engine ones are zero ohms. Um, for some reason these, that one there and that one there which is linked together has got a 50 ohm resistance between there and the battery terminal so I'm just gonna see if I can improve any of that before we connect the battery. So this is the critical moment now. The battery is reconnected. I have just discovered a bit of an issue with the key switch in the car which means that it doesn't always release the key out of the lock so another thing I'm going to have to buy but I can still get it to the starting position so we're full of oil we've got fuel in the car but we've disconnected the um, coil pack I'm just going to see if we can get any oil pressure by cranking the engine over a bit nervous, a bit scared about what's going to happen. Um, but hey, it's only a car. Okay, pretty fundamental fuel leak there. <laughs> so going no further with that. Yeah. 
Uh, I did wonder if those seals would hack it. <laughs> clearly, clearly not. So, um, good job we didn't try and start the engine there. So I'm going to give that a wipe over, see if I can resolve any of that. Otherwise we're a bit dead in the water for today. I have got a new seal kit coming for those. Um, so anyway, we'll see how we get on. Not so good. Okay, so we've put a replacement seal in from the other injector rail. Uh, I have a feeling that the old one was just completely wide open when I looked at it closely. But anyway, this time I've disconnected the fuel pump underneath the car. So we won't get fuel coming through. It might be a bit cycling through the pipes, I don't know. But anyway, we're just going to turn it over again, try to see some oil pressure inside the car. Okay, so that ran after about, well, however long it was, the oil light did go out. So I think we've got oil pressure now in the engine. So I'm just gonna have a look around, make sure there's no leaks anywhere. Sorry about that bright light. Make sure there's no leaks anywhere. And then I'll reconnect the fuel pump and the coil pack. Yeah. Fingers crossed. So this is the one, this is fuel pump reconnected, this is coil pack reconnected. I'm scared, I'm very scared. a very short time because there's no coolant in the system. She's a runner! Can't believe it. She's a runner. Right, let's turn it off. Yeah boy! Well guys, it's fair to say I am uh, over the moon with that result today. Uh, we had a little mishap but we soon recovered and this little baby is uh, running. We've got the coolant, a new coolant bottle coming, hopefully arriving tomorrow. Uh, so we can do the coolant system and then there's obviously various bits and bobs. I haven't reconnected any of the coolant loom yet, so that's still down there. That needs a clean up. Um, but yeah, really pleased that the thing is ticking over, at least. The engine, the exhaust is blowing in the middle. Fair enough, we need a bit of pace on there or something. And the key switch, yeah, I need a new key switch really, because it won't, it won't let the key out. <laughs> Which is a bit of an issue if you want to leave the car anywhere. Um, there's a little cam inside that snapped off, I think. So, a few little bobs and bits we need, but still. I'm very pleased and should be ready, hopefully, for the paint shop next week. So thanks for watching again and go and check out Evo Tech Tuning whenever you can. Um, I'm getting some more bits from them arriving tomorrow. So they're helping me out, so I'm trying to help them out. So yeah, have fun, enjoy the rest of your weekend and thanks for watching.